Okay. So let me check whether it is functioning or not. So I can see it is functioning now. So a very good morning to all of you students, those who have joined, those who are going to join. So today what we'll be doing, we'll be taking rapid fire MCQ questions, okay, on epidemiology. So it's very important that we understand epidemiology properly because this forms the base of of the subject and if you understand this it not only helps in community medicine it, it helps in other subjects also whenever you're going whenever you're doing research or other works so uh, let's take uh, let me see who all have joined yeah now this then becomes it easy for me yeah so students let's start let's not waste time this is your first question. So the first question is residents of three villages with three different types of water supply uh, were asked to participate in a study to identify cholera carriers. Because several cholera deaths had occurred in recent past, virtually everyone part present at the time submitted to examination. The proportion of residents in each village who were carried, who were carriers were computed and compared. So what type of study is this? Is it a cross-sectional study? It is a case control study? It is a concurrent cohort study? Or it, it is a non, uh, it's a non-concurrent study? Just try students, what, is, uh, what, what type of study it is? I cannot see any answers. What type of what type of study it is? Can anybody say? Okay, Ritesh Raja has joined. Good morning to you and other students. So it is a based on your answer, it is a cross-sectional study. Now why did you retract? It is correct, no? So the prop, the question says, it was correct, Ritesh. Why it is correct? Because see, uh, the investigator went there and tried to identify the reason behind what was the, what, what is the reason? So what happened just in fear, because there was a cholera outbreak, there was a cholera outbreak, so they, everybody came, to the researcher and they they submitted themselves to for investigation so the all the people were you know analyzed and compared so this definitely let me take the pen so it definitely becomes a cross sectional study because you were the investigator went once one day a good morning to you the uh, went one day and he whatever information he had he took single examination he did. The moment you are doing a single examination with this and other students, it becomes a cross-sectional study. It's not like you are going to do a follow-up or you know going backwards. So there is no question of control study, case control. There is no... So just for you, how we decide if you see Ritesh and other students, intervention, when you are doing intervention, if it is yes, it becomes experimental study. If you are not doing any intervention, it becomes observational study. So, if you, whether you are going to compare, if you are going to compare, it is analytical study. When you are not going to compare, it becomes descriptive study. And when you are going to compare, then what will be the direction of the study? If you are single examination, then it becomes cross-sectional. If you are moving forward, from exposure to outcome, then it becomes cohort. 
if you are moving backward from outcome to exposure, it becomes case control study. Taking this leg experimental study where you are doing certain intervention, are you going to do randomization? If yes, it becomes RCT. If you are not going to do randomization, student becomes non-RCT. So this is the way we decide what type of study it is. Just I thought you should uh, know this is this is also way we decide what type of study it is. Okay. Okay. Let's take the second question. The easiest one. The analytical study where population is the unit of study. What what type of study it is when the entire population is the unit of the study. Is it cross-sectional study, it is ecological study, it is case control, or it is cohort study. Come on, try. The analytical study where population is the unit of study. Is it cross-sectional, it is ecological, it is case control, it is cohort. Come on, you two, Ritesh, what, what could be the possible answer? You two is saying cohort. Okay, Ritesh, what are you saying? Okay, let's see. So whenever, the, whenever there is a population uh, as a unit of study, students always go with ecological study it is not cohort study it is not case control it is not cross-sectional okay so whenever there is a whenever there is a population as a unit of study the answer becomes ecological study it is not yeah uh, it is no Ritesh it is ecological study it is not cross-sectional it is not case control and cohort now how to you know remember this just see this slide and this will help you to remember you know, everywhere there will be no confusion now as i said we do two types of studies when you are only observing it becomes observational study and when you are doing intervention it becomes interventional study or experimental study so if you see when you are doing observational study the first study is descriptive study you are trying to describe the disease with respect to time place person so when you are describing the disease it becomes descriptive studies so descriptive study helps you to formulate a hypothesis that this a statement that this is the reason because uh, because of the uh, this is the reason that has caused the disease so that is hypothesis that can be true that cannot be true also so that hypothesis is tested by analytical study so analytical study does hypothesis testing the various types of analytical studies ecological where population is the unit of study students cross sectional case control cohort all studies individual is the unit of study okay and coming to intervention study as i said earlier also this confirms the hypothesis this makes a confirmation that you know, the hypothesis you have made is correct or incorrect okay and it can be you know rct it can be field trial it can be community trial anything so this is the uh, two way we divide study design is it an observational study experimental study and you see what is the unit of study in ecological population when you're talking about cross-sectional case control cohort the unit of study is individual so just remember this way this will help you to uh, you know this slide will help you to I will will help you never forget what is the unit of study in ecological as you say I have marked it is uh, uh, ecological study okay okay great now the next question students take this slight calculation will be required but this will help you to understand hundred individuals are diagnosed with lung cancer in a population of one lakh out of 100 patients 80 were smokers and 20,000 were smokers in total populations what is population attributable risk just try to calculate this what is population attributable risk in this question just 
see what can be the answer and just try to calculate so you have to calculate students population attributable risk now let me give you certain info since you you start calculating so you have to calculate population attributable risk it's not attributable risk so you should know first of all you should know what is population attributable risk if you know how, what is population attributable risk then you will be able to calculate this any idea anyone any answer to this okay i think nobody is answering so let's proceed how we will proceed student to this, this question so let's take the first line 100 individuals are diagnosed with lung cancer in a population of 1 lakh okay so let me write 1 lakh is the population and 100 is the case number of lung cancer okay if in 1 lakh 100 people are suffering from lung cancer okay so how many people will suffer in 1000 because that is the way we express incidence so you what will you do you will do 100 divided by 1 lakh into 1000 so this will be cut so it will become 1 what is this Ritesh is what is this this is incidence among population because the entire population is of 1 lakh in in 1 lakh 100 people are suffering from lung cancer so from in 1 lakh 100 people so in 1000 how much 1 just I calculated in 1001 person will have lung cancer so this is your 1 per 1000 is your incidence among population this we got now let's read the second part of the question the second part of the question if you see students out of 100 patients 80 were smokers okay and 20,000 were smokers in total populations okay so first of all out of 100 patients 80 were smokers it means 100 80 smokers means 20 are non-smokers 20 are non-smokers if 100 patients as were out of 180 were smokers so 20 were non-smokers so this is the uh, information which we got from the patients now 20 thousands were smokers in total populations so how many people were not smokers 1 lakh is the total population, 20,000 were smokers, so 80,000 is your non-smokers. So in 80,000 non-smokers, 20, no, 20 people developed lung cancer anyhow because you see 20 are non-smokers. So what is the incidence among non-exposed students? So incidence among non-exposed is in 80,000, 20 developed lung cancer. So 20 divided by 80,000 into 1000. So this goes, this goes, it becomes 1 by 4. Okay. What is this 1 by 4? It is incidence among non-exposed. Now what is population attributable risk? Population attributable risk becomes so easy students incidence among population minus incidence among a non-exposed. So I have calculated incidence among the population that was 1 and what is incidence among non-exposed 1 by 4. So what is 1 minus 1 by 4 will be. Please let me know did you understood or not Ritesh you two and those who have joined it is not C. It is not 50, it is 75. Is it clear or not? Slightest of doubt you have, please ask me, I will explain once again. Any doubt students? Because this has to be understood, unless until you don't understand, then it becomes quite difficult.
Everyone understood? Any doubt in this? How I calculated this? Ritesh again. Okay. Okay. So just see the question, Ritesh. One lakh is the total population. In 1 lakh 100 people who are suffering from lung cancer. So if I ask you what is the incidence. So incidence what will you do in 1 lakh 100. So in 1000 how many cases. So in 1000 it will be 1. So what I have calculated first I will write here incidence among population. Which is 1. Clear. Now read the second part of the question. Out of 100 patients 80 were smokers. The moment 80 were smokers means 20 were non-smokers. So this 20 are non-smokers but then also they developed lung, lung cancer. Okay. Now how many, what is the population? 20,000 were smokers. So how many, what is the total number of population who are non-smoking? That is 80,000. So in 80,000 those who are not smoking, 20 developed lung cancer. So in 80,000, 20. So in 1,000 how much? So that is 1 by 4. So this is your incidence among non-exposed. So when now you have two values. You have calculated non-exposed. You have calculated incidence among population. Now what is population attributable risk? Population attributable risk is students. You have to subtract the non-exposed from the incidence among population. You get the value. So what I did 1 minus 1 by 4. So that becomes 3 by 4. So that is 75%. So, we will go by the answer 75. Okay. I think it is clear now. Okay. Let us take the second question. Now, the next question. Now, the next question is, in comparison to a placebo, the number of adverse outcomes with a drug was seen. What is the relative risk reduction for the drug? So, what happened? There were two groups of patient students. First group, both were 1000 patients. The adverse outcome in 1000, those who were given drug, 10 adverse outcome was there. In placebo, 50 adverse outcome was there. So, what is the relative risk reduction for the drug? Okay, just try this students. How are you going to calculate the relative risk reduction? Okay. Now, I think this will also be slightly, uh, just you can see. How do you calculate this relative risk reduction for the drugs? Now, what will be... Uh, Anybody, anyone can try this? What is the answer? Or any idea how to approach? Okay. I will just, just think logically, students, if I say in, 10, in 1000, adverse outcome is 10. And in placebo, when you give placebo treatment in 1000, 50 is the adverse outcome. So, so, what is this adverse outcome? It is event. It is event. Okay. Now, students, if you see event in people who are who were on drug, event in patients who were on drug. So, what is that? Ten per thousand. Simple. So, this was it. Do simply fifty per thousand. Simple. Simple logic, 50 per thousand. So, event in drug, those who were on drug is 10 per thousand. Event means adverse outcome. So, an adverse outcome in placebo was 50 per thousand. So, these are the two things which we can draw the inference from this. Now, the question is asking you to calculate relative risk reduction. So, let's first calculate what is the absolute risk reduction, ARR. Okay, ARR becomes simple students, what you do, 50, this is the placebo event, so 50 divided by 1000 minus 10 divided by 1000. Just you subtract the drug, drug event from the placebo, 
and what will be the answer it will be 40 divided by 1000 so if you calculate this will becomes 0 0.04 okay but this is not the question but i am telling you whenever such type of question comes they also ask absolute risk reduction and relative risk reduction so this is your absolute risk reduction what i did the event in uh, in people who were in patients who were on drug i subtracted from the event in placebo on patients who are on placebo. Simple. Next thing the question is asking you relative risk. Now relative risk sim simple students what you do 50 divided by 1000 which is your event in placebo from this you subtract 10 divided by 1000 which is your event in drug so this is your uh, this is this is your absolute risk re reduction so the question is asking you what is the relativity so relativity in terms of this so put this denominator here 50 divided by 1000 and now you calculate students if i put here it becomes 40 divided by 1000 divided by 50 divided by 1000 so it goes this goes so it becomes 4 by 5 and if you calculate this, it becomes 0.8. So your answer should be 0.8. Students, did you get this? Ritesh and other students, any confusion in this? The same logic. Don't get confused. Don't get the same logic I did. And I have tried to calculate the relative risk reduction. What is the risk reduction in patients who are taking drug and in comparison to placebo? So the answer is 0.8. Don't go on the answer. I am only concerned whether you whether you understood how to calculate this. Any doubt? Because this becomes quite important if to that for you all people to understand. Okay. I'll take one more question on this so that your confusion goes. Okay. Right. Now take this question students. Number of adverse outcomes with a new drug A in comparison to placebo drug B or drug placebo was seen in the trial data is given below so this is the question so you have drug A total patient is 15,225 adverse outcome is 1605 placebo 15,024 patients and adverse outcome was this what is the relative risk reduction and absolute risk reduction can anybody do this Just try the same logic, what uh, the same uh, methodology which I did in the previous question. You can do the same thing here also. You can calculate the first thing. What what should be our approach? The approach is in one one fifteen thousand two hundred twenty five patients, sixteen hundred no sixteen hundred five is the adverse outcome. So. So what is the adverse outcome in drug A if I say, so you can do rightly, you can write 1605 divided by 15225. This you can write simple. Now the question is in prevalence, uh, sorry, in percentage students, the options is in percentage. So what I'll do, I'll put 100. I'll take 100 so that I have the percentage value. So it comes around 10.5 roughly, it comes around 11.8, okay. This is your value, and simple. So in 15,225, if you have 1605, what is the percentage of that? So that is 10.5 and here it is 11.8, okay. Simple percentage I calculated. So the event in drug A is 10.5% adverse outcome and adverse outcome in placebo is 11.8. This you got. Now the question is absolute risk reduction and relative risk reduction. If you remember the previous question, absolute risk reduction was what? Uh, means event in placebo minus event in 
draw. Simple. So let's convert let's con convert this in fraction, students. So even if you don't convert into fraction, 11.8 11 11 minus 10.5. So it becomes 1.3. So roughly it is 1.3%. Okay. Now so now coming to the options, I can see absolute reduction is 1% this option and this option. So I will think in between B and D, I will cross A and I will cross C. Okay, I will not take A, I will not take C. Now, the second part of the question is relative risk. So if you remember relative risk students, 11.8 minus 10.5 divided by 11.8 into 100 if you do it will come around roughly around 11 percent so this is your relative risk reduction so now if i go to the option is it d or is it b now we should go with the option b because it is 11 percent is the relative risk reduction and attributable risk re reduction is one percent so this is the way we calculate Relative risk reduction and absolute risk reduction. Any doubt? Any doubt how, how we are calculating students? Please ask because these are not that easy also. You have to understand. Don't go behind any formula. There is a logic behind this. Did you understood? So what I am doing in absolute risk reduction, I am subtracting the outcome of drug from the placebo that gives you absolute risk reduction and relative risk reduction. The same thing I am expressing in percentage by, you know, by dividing by, by dividing with the placebo thing, nothing else. Yeah, good. This, these are the questions, these are the questions asked in AIMS. So please try to un, uh, understand this. Okay, good. Now the easiest ones will move fast. All of the following are true about evidence-based medicine except AIMS to apply best available evidence gained from scientific method to clinical decision making. Research paper is investigated by the tool quoted in research paper itself to check validity. Options of medical professionals, researchers have been given least importance. Evidence is generated from weak and poor studies. So all are true except there is one thing which is not true in this. One thing which is not true in this. Just try Vikas, Ritesh, others. Which of the following is not correct, which doesn't fit in the criteria of evidence-based medicine? Yeah, Vikas is going with D. Very good. Anyone else? You too, Ritesh, others? Ritesh, no. Relative risk. Relative risk is the ratio. Relative risk is the ratio. Now the question is relative risk reduction. The word when you add reduction, then you have to compare. You don't take the ratio. You what you do? You compare with uh, means how to say from the placebo effect. For example, in the drug I am talking, the placebo effect from uh, from that you will subtract the drug effect. So that gives the difference of relative risk reduction and that you express in terms of percentage. So that becomes relative risk reduction. Okay, so that is the, uh, that is the way to understand. But the con what is the meaning? Just go by the word relative risk reduction. Placebo you are giving, placebo is what? There is no treatment, placebo. So 50, 50 is the outcome and when you are giving the drug, 10 is the outcome. So drug is having less outcome, adverse outcome than placebo. So what is the what is the reduction? So you subtract. And if you and now you have to express in percentage. You have to give a ratio. 
so that when you compare with that, it's just like an attributable risk. Relative risk reduction, you know, it is just like an attributable risk sort of thing. Okay. Now, uh, I can see uh, D. Yes, students evidence based medicine is EBM. We talked a lot about this. So, evidence is generated from weak and poor studies. The moment I read this line, I will go directly with D. I will not see A, B, C also. See, aim to apply best available evidence, correct. Research paper is investigated by the tool quoted, correct. Op opinions of medical professional researchers have been given least importance. Yes, I am a very good scholar. I say that follow my things. Why will you believe me? Don't believe me unless and until I give evidence. So this is also correct, this is also correct, this is also correct. The only thing which is not correct here is how will, how will I trust when the evidence is generated from weak and poor studies. So this doesn't fall in line of evidence based medicine. So we will go with D. Okay, great. Evidence based medicine is a gold standard of clinical practice nowadays students. It is the uh, aim is to apply best evidence available gained from scientific method to clinical decision making. Research paper is investigated by the tool quoted in research paper itself. See, this was the question, this was the line asked in the options. This is the line also asked in the question. Father of evidence based medicine, this is also one of the question asked, which is David Sackett. He was the you know, founded Department of Clinical Epidemiology in Canada. So, this may be also asked. So, for you, you should know this. Okay. The next question is students, natural history of disease is studied with longitudinal studies, cross-sectional studies, trials, none. Just try this. Natural history of disease studied with longitudinal studies, cross-sectional studies, trials, none. Come on, Vikas, Ritesh, you two. Iswar, this is easy. How do you study natural history of disease? Which study you have to do? Natural history of disease means what? The disease, the there will be agent host environment reaction. The organism will enter, the stimulus will enter inside the human beings, and then there will be process. No, then there will be sign and symptom. Ultimately, there will be development of disease. It can recover. It can no. Uh, it can die, it can proceed further. So this is your, this is your longitude, uh, long, uh, this natural history of disease. Means the disease natural way it moves. So it moves like this. The moment it's moved like this student, so you have to move, you have to also move like this. So how can you move by cross-sectional study? Cross-sectional is one line, no? single examination. So this doesn't help us to understand natural history of disease. The thing which helps us to understand natural history of disease is longitudinal study because you are moving forward. You are trying to see how the disease is evolving. What are the factors getting involved? Just remember this line students, this picture, you know this is the famous picture from the book park. This is the way natural history of disease happens. There is a period of pre-pathogenesis, there is a period of pathogenesis, the agent host environment factor interacts and it gives the stimulus, it enters inside the human being, there is physiological changes, then there is a sign and symptom illness and all. So what happens? After this there will be development of disease, uh, cross-sectional study, you cannot study by that. Okay. Now, the, la the next one, evidence based medicine refers to clinical trial to prove adverse effect of drug clinical trial to prove safety of drug, use of various clinic research finding for taking decision about best patient's care, all of the above. What do you think students? Just try. Evidence based medicine refers to clinical trial to prove adverse effect of drug, clinical trial to prove safety of drugs, use of various research finding for taking decision about best patient's care. Any, any clue to this? Vikas is going with D. Okay. U2 is also going with D. Now, ref, read the question once again. 
Evidence based medicine is not only clinical trial to prove adverse effect. No, no student, don't go with this. Clinical trials can be there. No, but evidence based medicine, if you see the options, read the third option use of various research finding for taking decision about best patient care. So, if you go, these are clinical trials. This can give to evidence, but this is not only this is only this is not only evidence based medicine. Evidence based medicine is various research finding, it can include this, it may not include this. Various research finding for taking decisions about best patient care. So, ultimately, why you want evidence because you want to treat the patient to the best possible way. So, whatever research is being done. For and that research, if you take into consideration for the decision about the patient, so the answer should be C. Okay. Okay. The next one, easiest one, the spot maps are used for a disease in epidemiology for depiction of local distribution, rural urban variations, national variations, international variations. Try this. Spot maps are used for a disease in epidemiology for depiction of local distribution, rural urban variations, national variations, international variations. Simplest one student. Yes, U2 goes with A. Yeah. So spot maps, whenever you plot a map, when you have a map, you plot the disease like John Snow did. So that helps you to understand the distribution pattern which is local. Just see this was the map, you know, John Snow's cholera map. So the broad street of London that hand pump, he plotted how many people are suffering from that. So just because of this spot mapping, he gave this conclusion that all those people are, uh, those people who are suffering are from waterborne disease. So this is the importance of spot map or shaded map, whatever you say. Yeah, the last question I will take students, just try this. The difference between descriptive and analytic studies. Descriptive studies are used to test hypothesis. Analytic studies are used to formulate a hypothesis. Descriptive studies are first phase in epidemiology. Analytic studies observe distribution of disease. Just try this. The difference between descriptive and analytic studies is descriptive studies are used to test hypothesis, analytic studies are used to formulate a hypothesis, descriptive uh, studies are first phase in epidemiology, analytic studies observe distribution of disease. Now how to proceed in all these questions students in epidemiology? Descriptive studies are used to test the hypothesis. If you remember one of the slide back I showed descriptive studies helps in to generate a hypothesis. So for testing the hypothesis we do analytical studies. So this stands wrong. Analytic studies are used to formulate a hypothesis. Who for which study helps in formulate hypothesis? Descriptive studies. So this also stands wrong. Descriptive studies are first phase in epidemiology as, as Vikas is saying. Go with C. Analytic studies observe distribution of disease. No. Descriptive epidemiology helps us to find the distribution of disease. So your answer should be C. Absolutely correct student. So students you see the questions though there are two or three uh, numerical based questions but that numerical based question is also very important no? because you have to understand you have to understand what is population at. If you don't understand the concept how will you calculate population attributable risk, attributable risk, relative risk, relative risk reduction, attributable risk re uh, reduction. So it becomes very important to understand it. Yesterday I took a special class on an academy platform where I was taking all numerical based questions. 50% of the things were covered. I was not able to complete it. So I am, I am planning to take a special class on uh, on uh, on 24th, 24th I am planning to uh, take a special class on 
yeah, numerical based questions students on an academic platform it is a special class you can join anybody can join no problem with that you can join your you can tell your colleagues please tell your friends who are preparing for pg examination to join those class because epidemiology is a thing which has to be understood if you don't understand and then it becomes you know difficult so on 24th march i think from 6 o'clock in the evening i'll be planning a class on uh, this numerical based question please join so that we can have a healthy discussion okay with that note students thank you very much for joining okay just go through if you have any question you can ask me you can write out to me so that i will be happy to answer the questions okay any question students did you understood if those whatever questions we take, took in this half an hour session did you understood okay thank you vikas thank you students all students take care prevent yourself prevent from covid 19 and uh, prevent yourself take all the utmost precautions tell your family members older people kids not to move outside in the house it's, it's spreading it's a pandemic now so just take care okay thank you take care can you explain mcq 2 okay wait wait i was about to stop let me go mcq 2 what was that this analytical study yeah so ecological study where is the what you do what you first of all students let's take the cross section let's take the options i'll explain you cross sectional study you are doing cross sectional study what you are doing you have a sample you go to a field so uh, you have a sample you collect you ask individual you ask individual and you collect uh, um, uh, information about that and you study so there what becomes your sample those who have those people who have selected they becomes the part of study so that is individual what is the unit of study individual coming to case control you have cases you have taken control again you have individual as a study cohort you have two groups study cohort control cohort there also you have individual but in ecological study you go to a hospital you go to a place you collect information whatever information you have and based on that you make a report and you you are trying to compare you are doing so you are not taking any particular group so you are taking entire population as a unit of study so that becomes ecological study so this is the uh, and if you see this 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 slide will help you so in ecological you are not taking any sample you are going to a, for example to a community a health facility and you are checking the records you are collecting all the information so what did you do did you take any particular people no you collected all the things so what is your unit of study so your unit of study becomes population is it clear you two oh, no sorry you two you two was clear vikas no is who asked me ha uh, you two asked is it clear so in ecological study you are not doing anything you are just going to a facility you are going to a place you are collecting information record based information and based on that you are doing a your study so that is ecological study simple okay thank you for joining and i am taking a special class on a regular basis please follow me on you on an academy platform students so it will help you in community medicines so i am taking lots of special class nowadays and uh, you can join also on an academy platform um, it's a good platform you have got lots of educators teaching so it will be good for you to learn okay with that note thank you very much for joining students take care bye bye